Uh, the players, in and of itself, uh, have two orbs so far, as far as I understand. Is that correct? You guys have two orbs so far, I believe? You have yes. The, uh, yep. And we were going to, like, figure out where the third one was. Exactly. And other than that, you know that you have a couple of orbs remaining, and you have a couple of options in regards to what to do with those orbs. Um, with with either uh, giving them in to, to create a portal to try to kill Ubel, uh, ultimately where where all the points are, or where where Ubel is essentially at its at his strongest, or uh, you can go ahead and protect yourself and the people around you by using them to uh, build Delksdale, or you can simply kill Ubel only in this timeline, which would likely save yourselves, but not ultimately save everyone. And uh, I believe that everyone was kind of on the fence about all of it. Yeah, I feel like the last time we discussed it, we were pretty much deciding to fight Ubel, but we were on the fence of, do we just care about our timeline, or do we go after the big one? Is that right, everyone? I, I want to kill him the most silliest way I can kill him. <laughs> and I think it was like if we go after the big one like the one that's the most powerful we were going to next look for that tower where it's not, where we possibly could become more powerful in a shorter amount of time to try to fight the like Omega version of him the Alpha I think we were leaning towards that after we had spoken to um, I just forgot his name Phil. His name is Phil. Yeah. I was trying to remember his character's name. Zarius. Name Zarius. <laughs> Zarius. Thank you. So, I will say, uh, even though Zarius is not here, that uh, he, his background, he had mentioned to you, is from another time. And technically speaking, by killing Ubel at his strongest... Uh, you will also defeat him uh, for everyone, thereby saving Zarius's family and friends uh, from another time. Yeah, I, I, I mean, Thorka's willing, after hearing his story and him telling the, us about how it could be possible to save them all, uh, Thorka's willing to take the chance, but he wants to now really visit that tower if the team can become more powerful in a like quote unquote faster you know way to try to get to Ubel sooner if that's possible mm -hmm. you know the training montage <laughs> basically <laughs> or or as i i rather call it the training arc <laughs> you know hild would definitely like to uh take him out when okay. he's not affecting anyone anymore, and the training arc would be uh, useful in accomplishing that. You know, it's like it's like in One Piece, and Anami came back thick as fuck. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, she's very thick, but more C's. Right, let's go through this. Yeah, it's like there's like four C's. Uh, we're actually so in order to um, in order to essentially prepare and train uh, the the gentleman from the Cognicionis had mentioned that there's the reverse tower which is a tower that goes deep underground uh, there is the orbs in and of itself and there are other places that to train that you aren't aware of yet that even he may not even be aware of yet uh, but there are always places to essentially train before you get to Bell. But the longer you wait, the stronger he may be. Uh, just because of how time kind of ebbs and flows. So it's completely up to you. As to what yeah, you'd like to do. I mean, that totally makes sense. I just feel like if we don't do the reverse tower and we try to take him on as we are now, I 
think he'd just squash us from everything that we're hearing about this, you know, the the, the singular Hubel. He can absolutely one shot me. But you hide. <laughs> and then he's like, true sight. And then he goes, fireball boom, goodbye. In your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful um, goblin face. So, uh, what does Tarek think about the reverse tower? I mean, I'm not the strongest one either. You know, um, I'm all about getting more powerful to basically, I want to destroy him by any means necessary. And if having more power at this point in the game, I'm, I'm all for it. I mean, whatever gives us our best options in the end. Tarek is also a little close-sighted right these days, too. So No, that's fair. I think, I think we all are in agreement, at least attempting the tower to build up our power and then go fight um, Ubel if it, it is the is the um, at least the current direction, as, and, and while finding the other orbs because we're going to need those anyway. So it's kind of like those two objectives, um, how well we can do them together. Whether we go now and try to find more orbs, do we take a break from going to orbs and go to the reverse tower? We might need to. Well, do we know where the the tower is in relation to, like, I guess the next orb? You don't, but the gentleman who is standing in the same room as you may know if you ask. So I turn to, uh, I believe that's Mazarius. Mm-hmm. And, and I basically ask him, I say, you know, from a logistics point, where, I mean, do you have any idea where the next potential orb could be in relation to this, this air, this reverse tower? I actually know where the orb is. Uh, the earth orb was discovered to be in a very peculiar place deep underground inside of a temple. Uh, I do and can make a portal for you as the Cognicionis is attempting to help you as much as I can. As far as the tower uh, that you're speaking of, it's kind of hard to not eavesdrop as I'm literally standing in the same room as you. Uh, we don't have a portal ready for that. We can have one available for you uh, next week. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, but... Uh, it's going to be a bit a bit scary. Uh, I will tell you that as far as the tower is concerned, <clears throat> there is no escape. Once you go and start going down, you'll either clear the tower or you'll die. Uh, so just keep that in mind. It is truly not for the faint of heart. And he uh, stares at you, Clink. What are you looking at me for? I ain't scared. I'm just dumb. I think he thinks you're fragile. Hmm. I'm slippery. You are little. With enough butter, you are slippery. You want to try that? So it is up to you, but, uh, yeah. Well, I guess for right now we can go after the Earth Sphere. And then, uh, you said it's going to take a week to prepare a portal. So we at least have a week to really, uh, think about it. And then, you know, go. I, I did say that uh, that tower is really going to grow some hair on your chest, if nothing else. That's what Clink needs. Yeah. And we, <laughs> we, we've been to hell, buddy, so, you know, that, that, that wasn't no picnic. 
Well, the difference between hell and this is, is that hell is naturally occurring, which is great. Because it's a bit easier to traverse. But the tower is designed by a mad mage from long, long ago. And then several mad mages later, and several other things later, magic and everything else, this tower now exists. It doesn't, it goes deeper, and, and normally it would go deep into the rock crevice and into hell, but because it's magically occurring, it doesn't go down that deep. So, essentially it's using a weird, strange spell in order for it not to go into hell, but still be nice and deep into the earth. As far as I understand, someone got to the ninth level before, and then uh, they pretty much escaped with their lives. All of their friends are dead, though. All 18 of them. And uh, the story they brought with them, did they, did they know if... I mean, it could be different floor to floor, but as a whole, did time move in the same conventional way it does move it moves right now they said that they spent two months of time down there and they only brought a week's worth of food apparently there's water down there that if you drink it it makes it so that you can heal your wounds however uh, it also makes it so you don't have to eat or drink but they were only down there for a day and they said that they were there for two months so I'm not entirely sure what they were talking about, um, I mean, the gentleman is dead now. He went insane. So, Well, then he was either crazy or Steve. time moves completely different because of wizard shenanigans. It's always wizards. Exactly. Now, do you think, with your best educated guess, that the like, let's say we go into the tower and whatever time we spend there... Uh, would we be hidden by Ubel's eye? Because it seems everywhere we try to travel to, he finds us. So obviously he's tracking us um, and trying to hamper us. But do you think whatever the, this wizard did to his tower would hide us for a time? I mean, we couldn't detect him. So, okay. so I mean, Ubel is certainly stronger than anyone here. Uh, certainly stronger, probably at this point, than any of the heads of any of the guilds. Uh, so, I'd like to think that you have a very strong chance of not being bothered by him while you're there. Uh, but you never know. I'll take a strong chance. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> um. Okay. So the Earth Sphere. We might as well go after that then. All right. Well, I'd like you guys to be careful as always. Can you go over no again promises. what you know about its location? I. So, uh, I have developed a portal. Uh, and essentially, the portal is going to take you deep underground into an underground uh, kind of forest. Uh, in that forest, there should be an entrance to a temple. You're going to go into the temple, and then you're going to grab the orb. Nice and simple, and I'm sure that there will be no enemies there to stop you. Perfect. Uh -huh. And and if there is, I, I can come back and uh, we can chat about it? Uh, I mean, I, I don't really know what's down there. Uh, we just narrowed down the orb's power, because it's kind of easier to feel the power reading of it so and we pretty much put a portal where we could so mm -hmm. okay well let's let's think about this so if we're going to if we think it's in a forest before we get into like whatever um underground it might be the forest could lead to things that are poisonous we could um try to protect ourselves from that um, that's the only thing I can think of going by that. We don't know what could be underground. It could be dark, so any of us who don't see well in the dark, uh, which I think I we that. all see well in the dark. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. good. I'm good. Hmm. Anyone else want to make any kind of guesses at what we could prepare for? Well, I mean, it's underground. I would say that uh, there's certainly some sort of zombies. Maybe some undead down there. I mean, it's the earth. I mean, un yeah. I mean, undead just seems to we just find and everywhere. Oh. Under the earth, above the earth, in a boat. You know, he's just. But yeah, no, that's a that's a good uh, guess. So. We could prepare for that. I mean, I have ways of dealing with the undead, even powerful ones. And um, I think most of us have experienced that already. I hate undead. Well, we, we no one here likes them. I shoot them from real far away. Especially those real mouthy ones that like to follow me and clink. Yep, the ones that make fun of you. Not those guys. <laughs> And there's also going to be, I mean, there's likely going to be crystal formations down there. I don't know if there's going to be any crystal uh, monsters down there. Well, I was thinking about that earth elementals, crystals. If if they are down there, they're going to be extremely hard. Uh, so you may want to learn how to fight against something that is well, very solid, physically solid. Where, you know, uh, Thorka looks at Tarek where it's like... You know, your swordsmanship is great, but your sword is very thin. <laughs> it's so I don't want it to be in a situation where you're fighting a mountain and you know, you're just poking at it. If they can shatter, you can do tattoo and shatter. That's what I'm thinking. We could we could all look at things like that, Sh uh, the shatter spell, and look at what other kind of weapons we can find that uh, would be against good against those things. So poison, shattering things, the undead, walk in the park. Yeah, walk in the park, see? Yeah, you know, not like the dragon we're going to find. The undead crystal dragon. I don't see an undead crystal dragon in your future at all. But right, if we Tarek? could see one. <laughs> mm-hmm. But if we do see one, you you know you would be interested to hear about it, wouldn't you? Oh, I'd certainly be interested. As a matter of fact, I'd pay you extra if you found uh, any sort of crystal dragon and got some of their scales. They're pretty valuable, actually. Any other? Um, if we were to encounter anything um, that was uh, crystal in nature, would you want samples? Yeah, can't hurt. I'd give you a, I'd give you a very decent amount of money for it. All right, then. So we'll keep that eye. Uh, can you think of anything else that... I mean, look, we'll bring you samples of things that we think are rare and strange. And you just... You can pay us for it. Or if it just helps in some other ways, then there you go. Um, all right. So let's go. Hey, I want to... I, I, I have to ask Mazaria something. Yes. And... and, and... The only reason I ask this is because Thorka had mentioned uh, Ubel having eyes on us. Would it be possible if someone had a prior connection to him that that link is there and that's the that's the eyes? Oh, most definitely. That would make the most sense. I mean, that's how he could be uh, scrying on us, if that's how he's finding us. But, uh, I mean, I feel at this point, that that helped him in the beginning, but now he just knows us. And I, I think that he would find us anyway. I so, mean, if, if there was such a link, would there a way, be a way to, to, to cut it off? <clears throat> Oh, there would probably be a very easy way to cut it off, but it, the the spell or the or the ritual in order to do it would have to we would have to figure out 
how the connection was made and then when the connection was made. And as long as we know both of those, the ceremony will will guarantee work, the ritual. Uh, if we don't know that stuff and we know who who is affected, but we don't know how they're affected or why or when, then it's going to be very difficult. And you, you, every, the, everyone can see if you're looking at Tarek, he's, he's very, he's very expressionless. And you, and it's like, he's, he's definitely thinking. Uh, Thor, Thorga doesn't look surprised at all. He's just, you know, uh, kind of, um. Matter of fact, right now, that that's what I would the best way I could explain what his mannerisms are. And I'm kind of looking at Thork at the same time, and I'm like, Hey, look, I understand, I know where you're getting coming from. What I'm you could do what you got to do, right? But whatever the connection is doesn't seem like he could just puppet you uh, uh you know not like the other times where you've been puppeted or like how we've all been puppeted those are all just us uh not having a lot of defense versus that but if he could puppet you i think he would have done it already so it's up to you how much you if you want to go into research mode on how to do this uh sever whatever thing you've done or maybe don't remember what you've done in the past I'll back you up. But I think he would just... Now he knows us. He might have other ways of scrying on us that we... So we would just look for maybe... If we sever that connection, we'd also have to figure out a way to keep his eye off of us in general. And it seems that he's just... He's very powerful, you know, for that. I know, I know there are spells for that. But I don't know if strong enough source to stop it. Mazarius, would there be something that would be able to totally make us blind to his eye? Or at least for short periods or temporarily? Well, if he performed any sort of ritual or uh, ceremony on anyone, especially if they were, if they were uh, akin to a spell in the past, then it's very likely that you could still be affected by it now. I, I don't know. We'd have to really examine each person individually. And I, I can do the examination, uh, but I don't know if uh, it, who may be affected by that. I don't know if anybody would have been affected by that. I like just kind of hold my hand up to his face. I said, there's no need to do any examination on anybody but myself. What? Why? Just do it. Uh, all right. So he uh, pulls out a wand. And the wand, uh, Thorka, the wand looks like it's uh, yellow with faint blue hue. And he uh, heads over here and he just moves it around Tarek. And you can see that the blue hue starts to grow black and then purple. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it, this is acting like you are working in best interests of Ubel. So you have some sort of connection with him and he can see where you go, Tarek. And then he moves it near you, Thorka, and you notice that the blue hue turns white instead of black and purple. This is what it should do. Well, I don't know if it should do that, but... Well, they, now, now you have your concrete evidence. So I'm kind of I'm just like look at Mazarius and I go. So how do how do I how do I get rid of this? Well, 
as long as I know when it happened or where it happened, then I can go ahead and just kind of concoct something right now. Really simple. And he opens up the drawer and you see him, you see some ingredients kind of inside of the drawer. Uh, it looks like a little bit of alchemy that you recognize from some of your alchemy friends. I can uh, mix a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but I don't know what the measurements are unless I know when this happened and how strong it is. <laughs> so Tarek is, is feverishly looking through his notes to actually find out a time. Um, I told him, I said, it, it happened a long time ago. And started at 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 Tivers. Oh. Okay. Well, at least uh, knowing it's in Tivers, he takes out uh, what looks to be uh, Thorka. I'm assuming that you're kind of watching him as he's doing this. And Tarek is not looking at anyone else. He's just staring at Mazarius. So he takes out a. Uh, a jar that seems to be just just silver liquid uh, and uh, and he puts a few drops into a cup and he says yeah so uh in that area people tend to be a bit uh sulfuric so we gotta add a little bit of sulfur into this mix and then we're gonna add a little bit of this a little bit of that and uh you said the time frame you it, would you say like uh uh <sighs> october you say uh, November. Uh, uh. Hold on. <laughs> uh, I, um, I'm just, I'm actually looking for it in my notes. I can't find it right at the moment. Hold on. I mean, I, I would just, yes, I would say almost, yeah, well, almost a year ago, close to a year ago. You were connected with Ubel almost a year ago. Okay, well, that's, I'm glad you're on our side now. And he, uh, you see him grab a, a gigantic, uh, one of the largest jars that are inside. Uh, and he, he says, oh, it's going to have to be really potent. So I hope you enjoy hot sauce. And he uh, he puts puts it in and mixes it in with the uh, sulfuric liquid, and you see the sulfuric liquid turn from silver to red. And he says, "All right, this is as good as it's gonna get. Uh, hopefully it works, and uh, we'll see what we can do." And then he he puts his hand out with the with the uh, cup and says, "Drink up." And I kind of pull my rapier out, and I said, even though it's thin, I said, if this doesn't help me and does anything else, but you'll see why I'm purple and black. And I down the concoction. Roll a percentile. So as the concoction <clears throat> enters your system, you start to feel a little jittery at first. And it's almost like your legs are just kind of shaking uh, without you controlling them. And finally, after, after a few minutes, they stop. And you feel pretty normal. He pulls out his wand and he moves it around you again. And the aura around the wand goes from uh, black and purple to white. All right, well, there you go. I think that we've uh, pretty much determined that you are not connected to anything uh, magically anymore, thankfully. So uh, Thorka, I would say that I would 100% agree that you should have nothing to worry about at this point. Well, I, I, I appreciate that thought, um, but at least it's one thing we don't have to worry about. 
But uh, I'm glad that uh, whatever uh, magical connection has seemed to go away now. Yes. I mean, I would have some questions myself, but that's neither here nor there. In the meantime, he claps his hands uh, loudly. And it's almost almost thunderous how loud they clap. And you see behind you a portal appear. That's the portal over to the Earth Orb. And that'll stay open for a while. So whether you want to go now or you want to go ahead and do some errands first and come back, you can absolutely do so. But it's there for you. Yeah, I think we're going to do a few errands. Like we said, maybe get some... Well, definitely the shatter in case uh, we do come into contact with crystal creatures, stone creatures, maybe some poison resistant stuff. And, um, you know, if anyone else think of any ideas, let's go for it. All right. Uh, Ted, Clink is going to try and see if she can buy, like, blunt arrows. Sure. Like, basically just arrows that do bludgeoning damage. Yeah, let me shift you over to the, um, to the map. Where did my map go? Oh, there it is. Pop you over to the city map. So, bludgeoning arrows. Uh, there should not be any issue whatsoever finding bludgeoning arrows. If you were to ask me what the price is, I don't know. We have found the problem. Um, let me try to find it. Because I definitely want to look at to see if, if we're going to the shop, if there's any, if he has anything decent as far as magical blunt weapons. That do blunt damage. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, blunt arrows deal bludgeoning damage rather than piercing damage. An archer can use a blunt arrow to deal non-lethal damage. At a normal minus four pack. Uh, that's Pathfinder, though. Yeah, it's fine. Um, I don't know. Like, it, I would just, I would just grade them as, as an upgrade to regular arrows. So whatever the cost would be for regular arrows, uh, or or regular magic arrows, I would consider them that. And if you want them to be plus one, then you got to pay more and so on and so forth. I would treat them. I would treat bludgeoning arrows like regular arrows for the most part. Um, and then if you want to get plus one or plus two or even plus three arrows, then you got to pay the pay the piper on that one <clears throat> as far as finding a magical bludgeoning weapon that would not be an issue um the i mean the keep in mind inverness has been kind of like high uh i wouldn't say high anxiety but uh high high uh high priority on on combat and fighting and uh crazy things happening in inverness so there are plenty of people wielding plus one and plus two weapons uh so if you do want to pick up a blunt plus one or a blunt plus two weapon uh you can absolutely do so but again it will cost you sure that makes sense definitely it would uh i guess uh at least be going for a blunt plus two mm-hmm Yeah, I think Tarek is just going to go to see if there is any blunt uh, crossbow bolts. And then uh, he's definitely going to McGregor's. Okay. Yeah, same thing. Uh, blunt crossbow bolts wouldn't be an issue at all. Um, it's especially with with uh, all the combat and all the fighting that's been going on. There's been much more uh, weapons kind of created and made. 
And then if you do want to go to McGregor's, it's not a problem. Uh, I just want everybody to go as a group. Uh, so when everybody is right. ready and feel good, then we can go to McGregor's and then we'll go we'll go and do whichever you like there. Okay. And as far as, I as, far as just Arrow, realized that I had pushed to talk. And okay. I wasn't pushing to talk. Okay. Uh, uh, as far as arrow cost, it's one gold per 20. Uh, so, And it's the same thing with crossbow bolts. It's one gold per 20. So if you want blunt arrows or blunt crossbow bolts, it would be the same thing. It would be one gold per 20. That does not count plus one arrows or anything like that. That's just the cost for regular arrows or bolts. Right. Sounds good. <clears throat> All right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, let me know what you like to do from here. I think we're getting tattoos. Yeah, yeah so... I'm definitely uh, buying a plus two Warhammer. Yes. And then I'll subtract the gold from that. Sounds good. Yeah, Tarek is just going to stick with the, the, his rapiers and then just get the blunt bolts. Yeah, Clink um, is sticking with her short bows. For his, for his crossbow for now. And then definitely sitting in McGregor's chair and, and, and giving him not a insane laundry list, but filling out some of the, the leftover space still on his body. You all seem to be here a lot. Addicted to tattoos, McGregor. Yeah. Once you get one, that's how it starts. <laughs> And then you can add and subtract appropriately the amount of gold and the tattoos that you would like from McGregor's. I trust you guys. Uh, so you just uh, do what you How much is a like. third? How much should we say a third bubble spell, please? 500. 500? Okay. Yeah. 500,000, yes. 500,000 gold pieces. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> All right. Hmm. I have to do some accounting here. All right. Which ones do we already have? I know I have less than most of them. The only one I have is Elemental Weapon. Because I think we ended up using our protection from energy. Yes. When we fought the birds. Yeah, I still have some left over, but I definitely burned a bunch. But yeah, Tarek's just getting the bodysuit, basically. Right, stop. All right. And then Shatter was a third level spell. So. I think it's technical. It's. I think it's second. I think it's a second level spell. It's a second. It's a second. I can get it at third. Yeah. But you can get it at third and make a bigger boom. I can make a bigger boom. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. Why not? It also raises the DC by two.
I think I'm good. All right. I don't know about anyone else. I'll be done in a second, but I'm just writing it out. Yeah, I'm pretty much good. Sounds good. How much are fourth level spells? I believe 2,500 gold pieces. And fifth is 5,000. Yeah, I just got myself out of that range. It hurts to have a backup. Thank you. Dead air accounting. Dead air accounting. Are you going back to the tower to go through the portal? I think so. Does anyone need any potion? I have two graders and one superior, so I'm good. I'm going to buy a few more, but I'm just going to write it out so we can fast forward. <laughs> sounds good to me. Okay, sounds good. Same here. But I have some stuff left over, so. Otherwise than that, I, yeah, I guess I'm ready. All right. Ready to die. <laughs> then I have you just going back, and then uh, you're going through the portal, is that correct? Yes. All right. Time to make some bad decisions. As you enter through the portal, you immediately notice that there are some crystal formations that are on the ground glowing. Uh, you can almost see across the entirety of this area. You see the water, you see a small bridge, and you see at the very, very, very end a door uh, that seems to be made of stone that you likely have to go through. Clank is going to immediately, without hesitation, put her hands up to her, her mouth in, like, a megaphone. Echo! 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 <laughs> when you do that, you feel this, this rumbling underneath your feet. And it's almost like a small earthquake. Everyone's kind of shaking a bit. And then it stops. Don't do that, got it! So I, I kind of lean in. I'm like, I think it's a down thing. So is there like, like, I guess this walkway is like stone. Is there like pebbles or anything? Yeah, it's, uh, it's stone. So you can, you can, uh, if you wanted to pick up a stone or a pebble or something. Yeah. Do you want to try like testing things out or even scouting? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to pick up a pebble and I just want to, I want to, I want to toss it in the, in the, in the water here. Let's give it a little plunk. All right, roll an attack roll for me. See how how well you do that. Just a d20. Plus your dex mod. Oh, fantastically shitty. So, it's not a natural one. So, uh, so you throw it at Clink. Yeah, so, so as you throw it, you don't even make it to the water. It lands about here. You feel the earth uh, move again, and then uh, from there, there seems to be a person uh, that is across the bridge. I don't think that's a person. And he walks up. 
and he yells out, What are you doing here? I don't know, Tarek. Why are we here? We're, uh, taking a stroll. It's a strange place to make a stroll. Well, you know, we, we like to find interesting and new places. Well, that's very interesting of you. Well, if you want to talk for a while, I'm here. I've been here for some time. What do you do here? Is this your home? Are you an explorer? Uh, unfortunately, it's my home. Uh, I am a bit of an explorer, in a sense. What's How your long... name? Uh, my name is too long for you to understand. But you can, you can call me uh, Kark. K-A-R-K. Oh, hello, Kark. So, have you always been here? Um, were you from somewhere else and then you just kind of got stuck? Or you just decided to leave? I've been here for a while. I've been here for some time. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a life, you know, uh, the water keeps me healthy. It's nice and clear and, uh, the rocks are certainly nutritious. So, you know, I eat what I can and the crystals, they, uh, honestly, they keep my teeth nice and shiny. So I don't mind at all. Uh, Why does the ground rumble? That's always important. Well, the ground rumbles because it uh, it is acts from the seismic activity. If you make any loud stomping or anything like that, uh, the ground gets mad at you. But if you simply walk instead of run, you should be okay. I would not suggest loud noises. Well, that's good to know. If we didn't meet you, might have made that mistake. Is there anything else you can tell us, you know, while we just, you know, explore the area that would be useful? Well, I'm assuming that you're here for a reason. Most people don't come deep underground into my lair for anything like that. So why are you here? Have you ever heard of... An item, the Earth Sphere? Yes, I know about the Earth Sphere. Uh, it has just recently appeared again, which means that the time is askew. Uh, but I know of, I only know of one person who has tried to uh, successfully get it so far. And unfortunately, they are part of the stream now. They've uh, floated away, as it were. Well, we're definitely after it because of the time skew. And we hope that our efforts would put it back into alignment. Hmm. We're trying to stop Bluebell. I don't know of <laughs> anyone named Bluebell. But, uh... Bluebell. Oh, Uvel. Oh, that's his name? Yes. <laughs> well, I do know of a man named Ubel. Uh, but, unfortunately, I do have to protect the orb from everyone. That being said, if uh, you wish to spar, I can spar. And if you win, then I will let you pass. But if you lose, then you must agree to leave. Um, so, we, is this a one-on-one -on -one spar, or is it all of us versus you? I don't think it would be fair if it was one-on-one. -on -one. But if you wish it to be, then it can be. But I would suggest that all of you fight, 
not just one on one. Keep be quiet about my fighting. I don't know about you two. No, if 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 you feel that it wouldn't be fair to have this bar, which is one on one, then we'll go along with that. As long as this is a sparring, that if we were to win, you've been kind. So it's not. I would not want to see you badly harmed. In, in the same way, where if this is a spar and you win, I wouldn't want to see any of us um, badly harmed. So. All right, so a few rules then. If I am to bring you to a point where you are crippled and bleeding out, then if you feed one of your friends any water from the river, it shall bring them back to uh, at least a point where they are not essentially bleeding anymore. But if they are, then they are out of the fight. If you cheat, I will know. And then my golems will activate. And you will not like that. So no cheating. And he, That's fair. <coughs> he's staring what would be at cheating? Clink. Yeah, what's well, defined as cheating? Well, yeah, cheating is as if I as if I I strike a fatal blow to uh, to you, uh, the gentleman who is speaking, and you're down and you're bleeding uh, to death. And your friends uh, feed you some liquid, and you spring back to life. Well, since then you have been brought to bleeding, you are currently out of the fight. So if you decide to fight again, or to help your allies once you're out of the fight, then that is cheating. Um, that's fair enough. Okay, good to know. Now, so if we feed the water to ourselves... If you get back up after your bleeding and you decide to help your allies, then you're cheating. I think she meant if she were to get up and not bleeding but still not feeling well, could she could one of us still at least use the water on ourselves? Oh, well, I, I yes, fight. take advantage. I feel that it is a strategic play and that would be smart of you. Then, then we we understand now. Now, in the same way, uh, if we were to hurt you in a way where you were close to bleeding, and uh, I would like to at least know um, what kind of sign could you give us that you know? Would you just simply you know concede the the the, the sparring, the duel, and? Um, let us go by. I like. I wouldn't. On the battlefield, uh, accidents happen. You may not want to kill someone, and it you get overzealous. So I would just like to have that understood before this match starts. That you, if we were to bring you to a point where you were close to death, you would at least verbally or give us some kind of symbol of giving up for, for giving the fight up. I I would tell you beforehand. Uh, I would say that I I am I have given up, and uh, you would know. Okay. My insight was was for if him talking about drinking the water. Oh, that's a good that's a good insight. Let's see. You believe him. All right. I turned to everyone. I said, don't go down. Well, obviously. I'll stay high up. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, no one wants to go down, but it's important to understand the rules of this fight. So I give you uh, I give you a small option. Uh, you can you can either fight me as I am, or you can fight me uh, in my normal form. What would you prefer? Well, what what does he look like right now? From where I, he's just on the edge of my. Yeah. Uh, so so as you spot him, 
he just looks like a gentleman. He seems like a very common looking fellow with a shield, uh, a sh uh, long sword, some armor on. He looks a little disheveled. And that's about it. He looks like a normal person. Well, question. I, I'd like to know that if you were to be in your normal form, is this a cosmetic change or is this a different in your power? Oh, this is simply a cosmetic change. I'd like to see what you really look like. Oh, I was going to get Nah, it's fine. <laughs> As you see him start to transform, some of the lights from the crystals start to start to dim out, and you can see the place slowly becoming darker. You mucked up. She says to Thorka. You have no idea this is not wasn't going to happen beforehand. And also, if he's been so honest with us so far, uh, I'd rather play him uh, in a true form. Uh, oh. Uh, Thor Thorka looks like he's... You... Thorka goes right in front of everyone else because he is giddy. This <laughs> thinkless creature. Fight the dragon, fight the dragon, fight the dragon. Well, I would like to uh, stretch a little. Uh, Please. You can, hear him, you can hear him cracking his legs, cracking his arms. I haven't had a good fight in a while. Derek has got like his hand behind him, feeling if the door is completely closed that he can't go back. <laughs> Yeah, Tarek um, and Clink are having the exact same idea. <laughs> hey, Ted. Yes. Would Thorka, uh, going through everything he's gone to and having his boon, would it give him any um, insight into this dragon? Yes. Uh, you can make a perception check as he stretches to uh, understand it. Perception. You'll get advantage on this check. Woo! Even better. All right, 19. You can tell that this dragon seems to focus a lot on the shadows. Uh, he, this dragon is likely the most powerful dragon that you've ever seen. Uh, just based off of some of the curvature of his spine and some of the some of the movements that he makes. Seems to move faster than any dragon that you've seen. Uh, you're also a little worried because he seems to almost be shimmering in the in the dim light almost like it's very difficult to kind of focus on him do i have a, any idea what kind of dragon he is you would describe it as some sort of shadowous dragon in some way that's about it interesting oh boy in a uh, draconic uh thorka tells him you know uh, um, you know, a good fight to you. And um, we'll see who comes out on top. I good fight to you as well. Uh, and he uh, disappears in the shadows. Okay, then. You guys can roll for initiative. There's Thorka. That's that that's actually still pretty good, right, Ted? I, it is. It's still not negative zero. So our yeah, zero, exactly. Right? Like this is great. He's he's above zero. It, it, 
it doesn't really matter where he is on the initiative. He's just going to go last anyway. I, you know, I could have got a 19 and still go, go last. That's true. I mean, yeah, with this initiative. Yeah, it's fine. There we go. I get to let you guys do something first. <laughs> <laughs> Criticals are already starting, guys. It's good. Ah, uh, he's already put the cheat I codes thought, in. I thought you were waiting for Phil to come to put the cheat codes. No, you know, you got to turn it on early, you know? Uh, so, <laughs> so he appears out of the shadows uh, because he was stealthed and casts a spell. Um, the spell that he casts creates a gigantic wave of water uh, and the wave of water seems to erupt from the river and comes through. Well, that's rude. So all of you need to make a strength saving throw for him. Oh, okay. I guess. Well, you all have advantage because it was a spell. And you all have plus three. Nice. Wee. Wow, a 22. And That's a 21. I have an eight. I got a 21 with a plus zero. That's fucking great. That didn't work, right? All right, 21 for Thorka. All right, everyone with a 21 or higher is going to take half. Hey. <laughs> so it's going to be uh, 20 damage for the half or 41 for the full bludgeoning damage. Can I, uh, can I uncanny dodge that or? Yeah, I'm looking at that. Because it, the way uncanny dodge is worded is really weird. It's a an attack that you can see. If a creature makes an attack that you can see, yeah, but it was. Is it? A, is I guess is a that's, spell the, that's the that's the that's the ever going argument online. Is you can see the you can see the creature casting the spell. Do you still take? Can you still use uncanny dodge? Otherwise, that just fucked me up. Checking. Yep, it's, it's a DM call. Checking. So normally I go by Jeremy Crawford. Uh, Jeremy Crawford, as of July 14th of 2017, said that Uncanny Dodge works against an attack that hits you. Magic Missile involves no attack, so Uncanny Dodge is no help against it. So it requires an attack roll. That's what I'm hearing. Already. <clears throat> however, however, if it is a spell that is very obvious that you can see is coming towards you, then I feel like you should be able to. Okay. So, so you have to use your best judgment. In this mm -hmm. particular situation, I don't see any problem with you using it because you see the water coming from the river. It's rushing towards you and then you can use it. Um, however, <clears throat> I would argue that it would cut your damage in half, not make the damage zero outright. Yeah, so, yeah. It, save cuts that in half and then Uncanny Dodge cuts that in half and half. Correct. So yeah. you would go from 20 to 10 and Tarek, you would go from 41 to 20. Got it. Hey, that's great. Same thing with like a fireball. You see the fireball coming, like stuff like that. But if somebody casts something like implode or something wacky uh, mm -hmm. where you don't see it coming, then I can understand why Jeremy thinks of it that way. Or like shatter or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Where it just appears in a space, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then uh, that wall of water was all the way up to the ceiling. Uh, the wall is still moving uh, and just kind of pushing out of the space. It's going to be there by the time it's all done. Um, and then from there, he is going to take a bonus action at the end of his turn. And he is 
he thinks he's hidden. He's gonna move over here. And then from there, it is Tarek's turn. Tarek. Was, was I knocked to the ground at all? Uh, oddly enough, Tsunami doesn't knock you down. Um, it just, yeah, it just does damage. It just does damage. So, uh, But at the start of your turn, since you're in the wall, uh, you have to take a strength saving throw. Because the water's plus three. Yeah, because the water's still moving around. Jesus Christ. Oh my gosh. That's, that's, look at what I rolled Derek. a three and a five and a two and a three. God damn it. Unbelievable. That's going to be 20 damage. And then, uh, and then in order for you to move, you can move by swimming right now. Because of the force of the wave, though, you must make a successful strength check against the spell save DC in order to move at all. So you have to make a successful strength check and then you'll be able to move. Am I doing that now? <laughs> yep. Oh, if you want to move, you can't attack right now there, unless you got a spell to cast underwater. When when we walked through, what did the was this like? A, this is underground and it's a cavern. Yep, and it's underground it, and it's a cavern. Yep. And is the water all the way to the ceiling? Water is all the way to the ceiling. It goes up to fifty feet, and the ceiling is only about twenty feet high. So. All right, I guess I'll make a strength saving throw. Um, you know what? So you it's can... water, all the, a water all the way to the ceiling, basically. Yeah, water all the way to the ceiling. You're like stuck in the middle of this water. That's it's almost like a flood. Like it right, just, right, just right. went. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna use command word, and I'm gonna cast long strider on myself just as my action, and okay. then I'm going to uh, I'm gonna try and uh, move out of this. Okay. So I guess it's a plus three would be a seventeen, which I think still fails. Yeah, still fails. So you'll be stuck in there for at least this round. Alright, and uh, yeah, that's it for me, I guess. Clink, I need you to make a strength saving throw. Fifteen. <laughs> You'll take the whole twenty-five. Ow. What's up, guys? Hey. That's rude. Um, I, got, I got my new character ready to roll, so... Same, though. Same, though. So... Yeah, you're fine. You're just now in a big wall of water, so, though. So, Clink in, like, mid-drown is going to be like, Get out, get out, get out, get out! And I'm going to use my Misty Step tattoo. Kaboom. No, cause it, kaboom is a different tattoo I have. Uh, Phil, roll a strength uh, saving throw for me. Sure. I can't see anything on the computer. Should be towards uh, the, towards the south Hold bottom, out. yeah. Oh, we're swimming? Uh, yeah, a gigantic tsunami uh, crashed into you with a big dragon that cast it. Can I transform? Um, if you were you going to be transformed beforehand? Uh, well, I figured if this water's hitting me, can I transform while in the water? You can while... transform while you're in the water, but if, if, the tsunami is going to hit you before your turn. Okay. So, um, I could swear I saw something about you could give yourself advantage on stealth if you moved half your movement speed. I swear I saw something about that. I'll check on that. Uh, Zarius, you're going to take 41 bludgeoning damage from the tsunami wave. And then let me check on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the uh, in the player's handbook mm -hmm. in page one seventy seven, 
Uh, so as long as you are, as long as you are not out in the open, um, you and you moved half. I believe it's half your speed. Right. Okay. So I'm going to try and nestle myself in between the tree and the rock. And I only okay. moved five feet to do that. And then that's my turn because it was bonus action to Misty Step. Sounds good. All right. And so, yep. So, Zarius, uh, outside of that, um, yeah, th that's your initiative. Is that correct? Oh, initiative? I'm sorry. Uh, initiative. Yep. yep, that's initiative. Okay. So, 16. Alright, perfect. Uh, Hild, it is your turn. I need a strength saving throw from you. Sorry, my phone rang. Not a problem. Yep, just need a strength saving throw. Uh, oh, uh, can I just uh, fly out of it? So, the water is all the way to the ceiling, and you're in the middle of the water. Uh, so, so ultimately, there's no way for your wings to kind of get any air or any speed. Uh, the only way for you to physically get out of this would be to swim. The well, I do have swim speed, so does that help? It will, it will still help, but the the water is physically moving you backwards. The strength check that you're making right now is the damage that you would be taking because the water is moving so much that's physically hurting you. Oh, okay. Hey. Cool. So, you. so you uh, do not take any damage, and then you still. Because of the force of the wave, you need to make a successful strength check against the spell DC in order to move at all. Uh, so uh, you can either use your athletics or just straight strength. It's the same thing. <laughs> there you go. Uh, do I still have advantage from Thorco? On skill checks, I don't think so. Yeah, no, that's well, just on DC saves, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nope. So you cannot move this turn. You can still do actions or bonus actions. You just can't move, and you're in the middle of the water. Yeah, I don't think I can do much that would help at the moment. Okay. You can pew pew at him. I don't know if I can see super well with the water rushing through my brain. It's going to be tough at best. Uh, you can try. It's up to you. Nah, I'm good. I don't want to accidentally shoot Thorka knowing my luck. <laughs> okay. Uh, Zarius, I need you to make a strength saving throw for me. Sure. Can I transform to a water elemental? You can after this, uh, like I just said before. It's just, this is just seeing if you take any damage uh, from the rushing water because you guys are in the middle of a tsunami, essentially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 22, then. And that'll be 38 points of bludgeoning damage. He has the plus three from Thorka, so... Oh, then you don't... If you have the plus three from Thorka, then you do not take that. Oh, 22? Okay. All right, so I, I rolled that. And I would use two of my wild shape points to transform into a water elemental. All right. Give me one second. Water element. I thought you were a fire. Element. <laughs> the hell is going on? Druids doing druid stuff. <laughs> yeah, I got wild shape. So if I use 
all of my points. I can transform to one of the four elements. Nice. <clears throat> all right, perfect. Uh, and then if you would like to move, you need to make a successful strength uh, athletics check against the spell save DC uh, this turn. Wait, athletics? Really? Shit. Actually, that's way better for me than just a straight. Right? Same. Straight. All right, let me just look at it real quick. Yeah, let's see. It's all right. Athletics is, is a dex. Athletics is strength. Strength. I would have saved on it. All right, so let's see the change because I have a word of mental stats. So I have a plus four. Okay. And Zarius next to me, so okay. Plus three, plus seven. Of course. You 15. are stuck there. Well, he gets, doesn't he get advantage and uh, from Thorka? No, that's only on skill checks. That's uh, only on saving throws. Excuse uh, me. Right. Is there anything else you'd like to do on your turn, Zarius? Uh, no. All right. I'm also a you know large creature, if that matters. Ooh, I can move you, or at least get you bigger. Yeah. Bigify. And Thorka, it is your turn. I need you to roll a strength saving throw for me. Twenty-three. You save against it. And then I need an athletics check if you would like to try to move on this turn. Okay. Seventeen. You are not moving this turn. Does the swim speed help? Fortunately not. Okay. Was that my action? No. Uh, that is that is just a. It's like it's literally a free action. Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, so if I can do other things, I can attempt it. Yes. So then I will bonus action Misty Step out of here. Okay. So that will put me. Sorry, moving little things. There you go. Five, three. So I'll put myself there. Wow, that was my bonus action. And, um... I'm gonna move. Okay. Trumpy, trumpy. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty. And... That is the end of my turn. Give me one second. All right, so uh, firstly, he is going to drop the tsunami. Uh, everyone falls. Uh, you don't take damage for falling. It's just everyone just kind of collapses to the ground after the tsunami uh, kind of goes away. Um, the dragon uh, steps up 40, about 40 feet, and you see him uh, grin at you. Thorka, and he says, I hope you're ready for this one. You said we were dueling, <laughs> so I've come to meet you. And he just opens his mouth and lets out a big oh, Come on. <laughs> a 90 foot cone. 
I need everyone to make a constitution saving throw for me. That's just rude. Oh, that's really just rude. <laughs> Enroll fucking... 27. Like garbage. Thorka, you are not affected. We're all blind. blind. Everyone else is paralyzed. Yay! But am I still hidden? <laughs> Don't think so. I cannot be. I can't well, be. Par I'm not paralyzed in this form, unfortunately. Well, then you're not paralyzed, so you're you're just you're like oh, that's mm. kind of smelly. I well, don't I'd like that we smell. Were, I'm assuming if you were hidden before you were paralyzed, you haven't moved yet. There's yeah! Been... Yeah, I would say you're probably still hidden. I don't okay. see... I, like, and, but, like, realistically, it wouldn't make sense. Like, he's still not looking for you. Right, right. So... He's not He's not actively looking for me. If he didn't see me before, then... If his passive perception didn't pick me up, then, yeah. Yeah. Um, if his passive perception's above a 34, then we're in trouble. Um, but uh, with the with the uh, last thing that he's going to do, he's going to try to uh, bite you, Thorka. That happens. Crunchy munchy. Thirty-one against your AC. Yeah, that, that definitely hits. It's going to be twenty-nine piercing damage. If it was like thirty or thirty-two, then we you know, I could fight against that. But you know, uh, that's thirty-one. And then he says to you, Thorka, I don't think it would be fair for me to use my frightful presence. So. Doesn't work on me. <laughs> oh. Sorry, your kind has already touched me. <laughs> Giggity. <laughs> Tarek, it's your Ball. turn. And guess what? Paralyzed means that you're paralyzed for a full minute. Uh, you're incapacitated, you cannot move, and you cannot speak. And you're absolutely shaken. But, at the end of your turn, you get to attempt to make another constitution saving throw. So, uh, being incapacitated, I can't do actions or reactions, so I guess no bonus actions as well, just for... You can't move or speak, you automatically fail strength and deck saving throws. Attack rolls against you have advantage. All attacks are criticals against you within five feet of you. And I roll an 11. That is uh, she poopy. You are you're yeah. still shaken. No, I'm paralyzed, basically. That's what I mean, yeah. 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 Uh, Clink, yeah. it's your turn. And same thing. Hey. And, uh, I'm Clink stuck in a hole. Clink is stuck in that hole. Hilt, uh, it's your turn. And uh, you're going to have to roll a constitution saving throw for me. Healed. She's coming. She ran to the restroom. Oh, my gosh. And there was a cat in her way. Unacceptable. Gandalf says hello. He says meow. Okay, so now that I am not amused by this dragon. <laughs> I need a constitution saving throw for me. I'm still not amused. God damn it. You are paralyzed. God damn it. However, a person who's not paralyzed is Zarius, and it is his turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, one, two, three, four, five. I can't see the dragon for some reason. Really? Yeah. Does I, your I, form have dark vision? Like, I'm assuming it does. Uh, let's find out. Oh, that's a good question. I don't think it does. I don't. Uh... 
Dark vision, 60 feet. Dark vision, Ooh. 60 feet. What a passive perception of 10. Good job. That's so dumb. But you still you still use your, your I think you use your passive perception because you're using your intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Ah, there it is. Um, yeah, I dashed over here. And that is all I can do. The elemental opened his eyes. <laughs> Whoa. I, I can't used... see. Open your eyes. Oh. I never used my eyes before. I took the red pill. <laughs> uh, and now it is Thorka's turn. Okay. Thorka is going to move. Up. Whack it on its stupid snout. And, uh, he, uh, to continue the conversation with him, uh, about, uh, not being, the frightful presence not, uh, doing much at him. So, have you tangled with the being Byzance in your, in your travels, in your past? Oh, that's weak dragon? I have. Well, that weak dragon is no no longer going to piss you off or annoy you if he ever did. Oh, he was annoying, but it's fine. He's a piece of the puzzle. That's how uh, we dealt with him. An annoying uh, an annoying uh piece of the puzzle that hopefully uh we'll get another uh piece of that puzzle when we uh defeat you and then Thorka uses vow of enmity as a bonus action which gives him advantage over his uh enemies and he takes two strikes at him all right so 33 <laughs> for the that, first attack that will hit and then uh we'll just go with the second attack Oh, wait, did I roll that to my head? No, so another... Third. So he hits both his attacks, yep. and they will both be... Uh... Where am I at? They will both be uh, third-level smites. Just give me one second. Um... Things are a little slow down on my end. This lappy's a piece of shit. Okay, so I'll do the the first uh, amount of damage for the first strike. So that was 47 points of damage. Um, sorry, that rolled tw um, twice for some reason. Um, so 47 points of damage for... Uh, the oh, no, that was for the both attacks. 47 and then a 46. Okay. And uh, those were his two attacks, his two strikes. He riles in pain, but you, you see that he's clearly... Definitely still up and definitely still ready to fight. Let's do this. From there. Okay, well, that's good for you guys. From there, he is going to say, I want you to try this on for size. And he does three attacks on you. Okay. First attack is a 23 against your AC. That one misses. 
That one hits. <sighs> obviously. And and uh, that one hits, too. So two hits. Okay. So those are both of his claws. Okay. So that'll be 31 damage total. I just added it all up. Okay. And then from there, Tarek, it's your turn. I need you to roll a constitution saving throw for me. You are still stupefied by the gas. No. Clink. See if you're even, ooh. Let's go! <laughs> Hild, Hild, how you doing? Constitution saving throw. Let's, uh, let's uh, see how this goes. But Zarius, what do you got for me? My boy. All right, I need you to roll a strength saving throw, please. Oh boy. All right. Plus 30. 18. All right, well, I beat the 15 I needed. Uh, so I won't be welling you. <laughs> All right. Uh, He's pretty strong. Yeah. All right. So I can't whelm you. Uh, all right. Returns over. All right. Uh, and then we're gonna go uh, after your turn. He's gonna make a legendary action, uh, and he's gonna beat his wings. Uh, each creature within 15 feet, both of you need to make dexterity saving throws. So Thorka sure. and Zarius. Okay. And you still get my plus three. Gotcha. That's real good. Oh. That's not real good. All right. Oh, I should move. Sorry, I can weld me. Sorry. That makes more sense. So both of you will take 18 points of bludgeoning damage and be knocked prone. And then he gets to move half of his flying speed. Can Elementus be knocked prone? I don't think no, they can. No, I cannot be knocked prone. I'll take 18. Alright. And he gets to move there. And then from there, Thorka, it is your turn. Okay. Um. Excuse me. So he gets up using half his movement. And can I start talking to Tuni if you're moving? It's part of a legendary action. That's the only reason why he can't, unfortunately. Then moving on. Thirty. Right. Okay. So he will misty step and then use his movement to get right right back up in his grill. All right. And then come with two more attacks to answer his wing buffeting. All right, attack one. Ooh. That will miss. And then attack two. All right, 25. That will hit. Okay. He will do another third level smite. Oh, hold on. That's those aren't the th those aren't the right dice. Thirty nine points of damage. All right. And uh, that is my turn. All right. Uh, at the end of your turn, it is going to make a perception check. Okie dokie. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> It's going to recharge, and then it's going to breathe in and breathe out. This time, I need you to both, uh, both of you, make a Constitution saving throw for me. 
this one feels like a shadowy, icy blast. Thirty-one. All right, so that is half for you, and only half for Zarius. going to be 30 points of necrotic damage. From there, it seems to... Uh, the dragon seems to kind of puff out it's it's uh, scales, and you could see that he seems to be a bit more resistant, Thorka. Um, you're not sure what he did, but he seems to be even stronger at this point. Now I know you're you're meaning business, so I'm going to uh, prepare for this. And Tarek, it is your turn. I need a constitution saving throw for me. So, uh, it fails, but this is the end of the round in which you had left. So, after this round, you'll be you'll be back. Clink, it's your turn. I need a constitution saving throw for me, and that'll be the last round for you. Hild. A new constitution saving throw for me. Let's let us hope. Oh. Nope. And that'll be the last round for you. We're so good. Hooray. <laughs> and Zarius, it's your turn. Um. All right. I uh, guess bonus action. I'll rage. All right. And I'll move. 20 feet. One, one, two, three, four. And action, I guess I'll move 20 feet more. One, two, three, four. Because I, I took ice damage, so I freeze. So until my next turn, my, my speed's reduced by 20. Wait. Oh, I did that. necrotic damage. Oh, uh, this is icy. Way you it's a, it, it, yeah, but it's necrotic. I don't know why it's described that way, but yeah, it's a necrotic damage. All right, we're moving back. Let me recount then. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So that's my full action, and then I get to roll to see if I get my whelm back. I do not. Okay, uh, that's it. I'm done. All right, Thorka, it's your turn. Okay, Thorka has to use his action to uh, lay hands on himself. All right. And as a bonus action, he's going to speak his sword's command word. And you just see it um, start radiating with electrical energy. Uh, that is all. All right. It is the dragon's turn. And he does not recharge his breath weapon. He looks at Thorka and sees the disadvantage he's at. And he says, What's wrong, old man? <laughs> and attacks you three times. Uh, for that's for the bite. And those are for the claws. Yeah, all three hit. It's going to be 56 total damage. Piercing and slashing. And then from there, Tarek, it's your turn. You are, you are shaken out of your paralysis 
Okay, as I was as I was paralyzed, was I able to see anything happening just basically beyond my the rest of the the cavern is dark, so I couldn't see anything. If you can't see it, you can't see All it. Right. You'll hear it though. Uh, right. They're not they're not whispering. So one of the things I wanted to ask was any of these initially when it started he he did something and some of the crystals went dim um did i notice that any of these during that whole time i was paralyzed as i knew there was a battle happening just outside my vision did i see any of these crystals like pulsing it kind of in rhythm with the battle or anything like that no they've been dim the whole time all right so basically the everything is dark outside of of what i can see now all right yes and the corridor is 20 feet high and these are walls etc yes all right so Tarek, you know hadn't had not having a good experience so far since actually stepping into this freaking cavern is a little shaken i feel that and he is going to cast Spider Climb on himself from one of the tattoos and skitter up the wall and basically hide somewhere in the ceiling. He's going to freaking dash along the ceiling. Um, so that should be fine. Too. Just remember going up the wall will be 20 feet of movement. Okay. So, if I go, whoops. So, I'm basically going to dash to here, up the wall, up the ceiling, dash on the, and I'm just, I'm going to attempt to bonus action hide. Okay. Hide up in the dark in the ceiling. Okay, uh, you feel like you are hidden. Um, you're not sure if you are until until it happens, but you feel that you're hidden. All right, that ends my turn. Okay. Uh, Clink, it is your turn. Ducky ducky. You you can at least move around. You can. You don't feel paralyzed anymore. Good, good for me. I'm gonna gonna peekaboo. 32 to hit him. Cause I, I can see the dragon. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to I, 32 hit him in his stupid face. Uh, that will hit. So that's uh, 30. That's 34 plus 13 because of Fury of the Small. That is 47. 47 points of piercing damage. Lola let me floss his teeth. And then I'm going to slink back into my hole. Ready? Okay. Ready to go out? I figured I should start getting the habit of that. Alright. Oh. Hilled, it is your turn. I've seen his ears. I can it. finally do something. Yay! I should like seeing all that stuff. <laughs> Zarius, I had to turn you down because you have an open mic right now, just so you're aware. Did me a full flight hobby, and now I do me a blasty. All right. Those will all hit. Hooray! Woo! It's, yeah, so those. Uh, do I? I forget. Do I add uh, my charisma to those or no? I believe you're supposed to, yeah. Okay. So that um, is 8, 12, and 11. All right, perfect. All right, Zarius, it is your turn. And he is 
not here right now. All right, well, uh, we'll move forward. Thorka, it is your turn. <laughs> okay, so uh, Th Thorka's old. I'm not old. Am I old? <laughs> and then he just starts uh, the uh, fighting again. <laughs> I apologize for that. Oh, you're back? Take your yeah, turn. Uh, it's your turn, then. Really sorry for that. All right, I'm going to... Oh, good. Finally be a, a chance to finally attack this damn thing. Uh, I got plus seven. Do it. Stuff. We're going to punch it. That hits it. All right. Uh, we'll go reckless, just so, I, just so I can see if I get a crit. Nope. Second attack. Mm -hmm. All right. Just Second one hit. Miss. All right. 2d8 plus 5, I think it is. Plus 4. Plus 4. Awesome. A whopping 11 damage. So from there, Thorka, it is your turn. Okay, he will uh, again the old uh, thing about uh, how now he wonders if he is old, <laughs> and he uh, comes out with uh, two strikes with a sword. So that the first one's a crit, nice. and the second one's a crit. Oh, nice! Let's fucking go. So those are both second level smites. All right. So, and they all also have um, extra lightning damage that gets uh, double two. So this is the first attack. Oh, God, I keep not switching to die. I I apologize. So six no, no, no. six points of damage. Thorka, and then, Thorka, you do see that some of the blow is negated by the by his scales. Do I? Um, I can't make a really a perception check, but this might give me a little bit more. So this is now the lightning damage from the sword. Do I? How do I see that? Well, that's three ones in a row and a two. <laughs> oh yeah, well, that. Yeah, that shouldn't have had the eleven. So that that is only uh two, three, four. That's only five. Ted. Oh jeez. Um, and then this would now be the second attack's damage, which was also a crit. So another seventy points of damage. Plus. Uh, 14 more points of damage. Or uh, rather, 13. Alright. You just notice that his scales are just extremely, like, almost bound to the earth, as strong as they are. And just the, the blows, even though they're tremendously strong, uh, he's he seems to at least be resistant to all of it. To all of it? To all of it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's a fun trick you have there. <laughs> yes, well, uh, when I have to deal with situations like this, it's necessary. And he goes ahead and does uh, his bite and his two claw attacks. This is his bite. It's going to be 28 against you, Thorka. That hits. That misses. And uh, that hits. That's going to be 41 points of damage. Okay. And then from there, Tarek, it's your turn. Um, so I'm going to move. I'm thinking I'm hidden. 
So I'm going to creep along the edge of the wall on the ceiling um, to there. And I'm going to try something. I'm going to use one of the tattoos and I'm going to put it like right here and I'm going to cast Shatter onto the dragon. To, to see what happens since he's like a some type of crystal uh, form. So he has to make a uh, a constitution saving throw. And he has disadvantage on the saving throw if he's of stone, crystal, or metal. And that would be a... I think it's a 13... great but yeah the third level one i have is a dc 15 so the second level one is 13 yeah uh 26 so he will just take then oh not bad half of that So I don't think it does anything else. Da -da 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 -da. Thunder, da -da 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 -da. creature made a disadvantage. She takes half damage. Blah, 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 blah. So that was my uh, that was my turn. And what was the ruling on drinking potions? You had to use an action for that. Yeah, it's the same okay. as a normal normal right. uh, game. So uh, I'm just thinking that I'm still in the dark. I'm gonna try and hide again from where I was at. Just. Okay. I'm tucking in close to the wall up in the corner. All right. As a legendary action, he is going to make a tail attack on Zarius. All right. Uh, with my reaction, I give him disadvantage because of my fighting style. All right. He also gets advantage because he was reckless last turn. So that's well. be a regular. It'll be 26 against your AC. Yeah, you crushed it. It's going to be 19 points of bludgeoning damage. All right, so I take nine. You got this, water man. <sighs> yeah, I'm raging. And then, Clink, it's your turn. I'm going to inch out a little bit. Action, drink water. I haven't told the water's good. All right, roll percentile for me. Oh boy. <laughs> um. Sixty-four. Okay. You turn into a cow, and there's cabbages that pop up everywhere. Yeah. No, I think it might be the zombie. <laughs> <laughs> the berating zombie. <laughs> the berating zombie is the best one. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that you... Yeah, you are... Uh, are you time... Do you have time sickness or no? No. Oh, okay. Uh, so your eyes, as you're as you're looking, you're trying to keep them open, trying to keep them open, and they're forced closed. You can't open them at all. For five days. Okay. Gonna curl back up in my in my hidey hole. Uh, hold on. You get a. I, I didn't. I also didn't break sneak, so I have no, no reason. No, no, you. So I'm tr I'm trying to go through the rest of the role play for you. Mm -hmm. um, so as that happens, when that finalizes, you get a free perception check, perception or insight, whichever whichever is higher. Okay, so I'm going to use perception. 
you suddenly realize that you actually can see better than you used to be able to. Almost as if you have true sight for the same amount of distance that you had your night vision. Yeah. <laughs> Except your eyes cannot be opened. You see more with your eyes closed. Okay, Lulu. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um. You yeah, also, I'm just... you also gain eighteen hit points. Yeah. And then I'm going to. How fast is this water moving? So I just moved forward. How fast is this water moving? Like, am I able to wade through this? You can definitely wade through it. You don't have any... It's, it's like, barely to your waist. You can just kind of walk through. Okay. So I'm going to wade through water, and then I'm going to camp out behind the next tree. If I have to make another stealth check, I'll, I'll do it, but... I don't think that would break stealth, especially since he's in combat with two other creatures. So. It would be okay for now. Okay, sounds good. Hild, it is your turn. Okie dokie. Um, da -da -da -da. So Thork is looking pretty bad, right? But not out? Um, he's not out, but, you know, he's been in a fight. <laughs> Then what I can do is... I can bonus word healing uh, healing word you. That's the words. <laughs> healing action. Yeah, healing action. Haha. -ha. Healing word. So I will do that, and then I think, because that's a bonus action, I can still, uh, attack. Yeah, you're within 60 feet of me. Yeah. Oops, wrong button. Well, well, thank you. Uh, uh, do I have enough movement to move an attack since I just bonus action? Uh, how far do you already move? I haven't moved. I only bonus actioned. Uh, 5, 10, it depends on how much movement you have. You, if you have at least 30 movement, you can go ahead and get to the dragon and attack him. Hooray. Time to hit the dragon. Hopefully. So I that, don't know if 17. <laughs> yeah, that will be a miss. Dang it. But you certainly have a better chance than anyone else I know wielding that sword. Oh, so. uh, great. I can uh, heal it, um, my uh, um, action sword. Uh, Hild can lift the sword. I can. Uh, that, I will, that will hit. Huzzah. Are you wielding it with two hands? Yes. Okay, so it's all of those numbers together as far as damage. So, including the 11, or no, the, the 9, 12, and 6. Yeah, it's the 9, 12, and 6. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so it's 27 radiant damage. Ooh. And then I can action surge so I can hit it two more times. <laughs> Uh-oh. Nice. <laughs> ba -ba. Hold on, let me get the percentile. 
Oh, this is exciting. Let's see what happens. This is oh, either going to be good or really bad. Berating uh -oh. zombie. Berating zombie. That's definitely not berating zombie. <laughs> no, it's not. I don't think anyone's rolled an 88 before. Uh, Hild, Hild, as the, as the, uh, as the words come out of your mouth, you realize that you can't really say anything, but you notice that while singing, you're able to go ahead and say what you're going to say. Oh boy, I'm stuck singing. Cool. <laughs> then one more attack, because of the action sword, and that's a miss. Alright. Uh, Thorka, you did notice that all the radiant damage didn't seem to get blocked by anything. So there's that. So wait, her radiant damage didn't get blocked? That's correct. But mine did. Were you doing radiant damage? Divine Smite. I was ca oh, I apologize. You were ca I was already counting that, uh, but your radiant damage was also not, uh, being blocked. Oh, okay. So he did take damage, but it looked like he withstood some of that when I was attacking him. Correct. Okay. Uh, Zarius, it is your turn. Alrighty. Uh, let's see if I get my will back. I do get it back. Alright, bonus action. I'm going to uh, use a level 5 slot to heal myself. With my... Wild Shape Combat. All right. So I heal for 15. Uh, plus be at 107. Yeah. Uh, I'll attack the... I'm going to attack him recklessly twice. Oh, that, nice. Okay. I'll take it. And then my second attack... Only the first attack will hit. Alright. 25 bludgeoning it. Alright. And I need you to do a strength saving throw, please. Thirty. My turn's over. Alright. At the end of your turn. <laughs> Uh, it is going to try to do a tail whip attack on you for critting him. It's going to try to whip you. Uh, I will, instead of getting advantage, you would just get normal. Yep. 25 against your AC. That hits. It looks like you just auto hit unless you roll a 1. Uh, I'll take, I'll take ten. Okay. I, I'm right now. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm trying to. I would. I'm just stopping him from critting on you. No, I. I, I appreciate everything I'm you do. So thank you. Very... I'm gonna protect you, Waterman, until you I become appreciate... Fireman again. <laughs> I appreciate it very much. And then Unfortunately, Thorka, it's your turn. My uh, Thorka is going to drink a potion. Uh, okay. superior healing potion. Okay, he's going to get back 27, and then he's also, with a bonus action, going to use Second Win to uh, get um, 1d10 plus 1 back okay. uh, of healing. And then that will be uh, the end of his turn. Okay, he's good now. Uh, um, I am right. done. At the end of your turn, uh, he is going to attempt to tail attack you, Thorka. Okay. With a 24. Yeah, that hits my armor class. He's going to hit you for 14 damage. Okay. This is an important roll here. That is not good. You see his toothy grin as he breathes in. 
starts to breathe out. Oh, that's bright. It's a gigantic, uh, icy, the shadowy icy blast. I need everyone uh, that's in that blast to make a constitution saving throw for me. So, uh, am I affected because I'm on the ceiling? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. How high is the breath? It's but, a 90, uh, foot, well, it's a 90 oh. foot cone. So I don't. I, I would imagine. I believe that's a yes. I would imagine it's a probably. So, uh, Phil and Cat, you still get you get plus three and advantage. It's a con, right? You said it is Constitution. Yes. Right. Thirty-one for uh, Thorka. Thorka will take half. Uh, fifteen. Aha, Technically, should be farther. Actually, that with that mark of eighty, it actually should be farther. I have a nineteen. I don't know if that saves him. Either way, like, I think it like would barely graze Clink. Yeah, it barely grazes her. My metal. She's like, oh, that's ugly. <laughs> it's like get your toe. It's and like you see more with your eyes out closed. I see colors. And Hild, you got a 25 or 22? 22. 22, okay. So Hild, you're going to take full. Zarius, you're going to take full. Uh, Thorka, you're going to take half. And Tarek, you're going to take full. Can I uncanny dodge yet? Yeah, I mean, you're seeing it. All right. I, I just, I use the logic. Like, you're going to see the breath coming. I, I, there's no, there's no hiding from it, you know? <laughs> The dragon ain't trying to hide anything. This this is a fight. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. tried to hide in the beginning. That's true. It didn't work. <laughs> oh, Jesus, fuck. Oh, fuck. So half of the 72 would be 36. Otherwise, it would be 72 damage if you did not what save. What kind of damage is it? It's necrotic. All right, I take, uh, take half. Okay. Aha, uh -huh, take half. Haha, -ha, not down yet. <laughs> exactly. Thorka's <laughs> taking like 5,000 points of damage from this fuck. thing. Okay? And that's, all, uh, that's all I've done is take damage. I've done and like nothing. being paralyzed is to your advantage for three rounds. Yeah. And Tarek, it's your turn. All right, Tarek draws the soul ripper and, and shakes and says, y y you better Epping work. Yeah, you better run. <laughs> Roll a percentile for me. It works. Hey. Ah. Fantastic. So the the first thing Tarek does is he will drink a potion of superior healing. Okay. So that'll be a. I type terribly. So he'll get back 33. That's really good. Yeah, I needed that. So it's four fours. And then with my uh, bonus action. So my first action, I, I'll drink the potion, and then my second, my bonus action, I am going to, let's, if I can get roll 20 to play nice with me. I'm going to dash, oh, I can't do it. I don't think I can do it. All right. So I'm going to skitter across the ceiling. Okay. And this will probably be the death of me. And I'm going to move to there. So that's basically bonus action dash to here. And then I just, I booming blade with the soul ripper. Uh, okay. Uh, with a 19, that will miss. And 
that will be the end of my turn and the prelude to my death. All right. At the end of your turn, uh, since it... Uh, actually, at the end of your turn, it's going to do a... Um, it's actually going to do a perception check. So that would make the most sense, yeah. Girl, okay, I got 31 myself. And then, <laughs> well, it's not looking for you. Fine. <laughs> then, Clink, it's your turn. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm going to shoot it from where I am. That I, I, I think it's, I think it's going to miss. Uh, that's 30, that's 32 points of damage. Okay. And then I'm going to back up. Because <laughs> that breath got too close for comfort. And it worked last time so well. I'm going to bonus action, fast hands, going to drink another gulp of water. All right. Uh, roll percentile for me. Oh, we're going to do the inverse this time. <laughs> All right. Give me one second. I have to actually put a token out for this. It's going to be a fucking mocking. Ooh. She's like, are you fucking joking? <laughs> She broke her stealth anyway, so even if there's a mocking zombie. Uh, a gigantic floating eye is now what? floating next to you. <laughs> Are you friendly? <laughs> and you're going to gain six health. That was some pretty terrible rolls. Do better. Uh... <laughs> I'm gonna go all the way but there. Okay! <laughs> Have a pet now. And that's my turn. At the end of your turn, it's going to do a tail attack on Tarek. Thirty against your AC. That'll hit. It's gonna be 16 bludgeoning damage. All right, uncanny dodge. That sounds good. Just be eight. Hild, it is your turn. Okay, I'm gonna boop Thorka with my stick. Actually, no, I'm gonna do a big boop, and I think I'm gonna hit me Thorka, Waterman. And is uh, Tarek within 60 feet of me? Uh, probably. Yeah, he is. Okay. Oh, that's where he went. Okay. <clears throat> Okie dokie. Hooray! That's rolling like crap. Toot toot. <laughs> You're all healed for 14. Oh. There's a dog. <laughs> Take it. All right. Is there anything else that you do in your turn, Held? Um, it's a bonus. That I think it's too high of a level to summon it since I just did an action. Uh, I can't summon spiritual weapon, can I? Can't cast two spells a turn unless it's a... Yeah. Uh... I can't trip. <clears throat> Figured I'd double check. Yeah. Oh, so... Oh, no, that's a full action. Never mind. I'm done. <laughs> At the end of your turn, I'm gonna tail whip on Tarek again. going to be 14 points of bludgeoning damage. And that was the same... Yeah, that's still the same. I already used my reaction. Alright. Yeah. And then, Zarius, it's your turn. Zarius, are you there? 
Are you muted? Could be muted. Hello. His children could be eating him. That's true. They could have finally got him. Alright, uh, well, when he comes back, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Thorka, it's your turn. Alright. Thorka is, um, gonna continue his attacks. Is that 28 for the first attack? That will hit. And then 33 for the second attack. And that'll definitely hit as well. Uh, Ted, for... Um, do you want me to roll out... Because um, I'm going to be smiting. Do you want me to roll out that regular damage and the smite damage separate? That'll be very helpful. Okay, so let, that that's fine. I've been having to, like, do the math on my own this whole time, so. No, uh, yeah, I'll, um, so I'm going to roll out, um, so for Brevery, I'm going to, so for the two attacks, I'm going to roll out the regular sword damage, and then I'll roll, for the two attacks, I'll roll all the, the smite damage. Is that okay with you? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So this is the sword attack. So that's 41 points of damage altogether for just the sword. Then, um, for Divine Smite, for the two attacks, that's 27 points of damage. And then for the electricity uh, attack, uh, da damage is another 12 points of damage. Okay. He looks weak, but he's not out. All right. And that the, that is the end of his turn. All right. At the end of his turn, he's going to tail whip... Ter or at the end of your turn, he's going to try to tail whip Tarek again. 36 AC. against your AC. <laughs> Tarek's just trying to jump over the tail. That's <laughs> uh, 12 points of bludgeoning damage. And then he, oh. <laughs> he breathes in. And then he breathes out. Glad I moved! <laughs> and I need all three of you to make a constitution saving throw for me. Those crits are doing you real well. <laughs> All right, 31, yeah. And then Hild had a 21? Yes. All right, uh, and Phil, are you there? I'm here. I need you to make a constitution saving throw for me. Alrighty. Wow, the children haven't eaten you. It's it's chaos over here. Do I still get advantage or no? Yes. And you right. plus three and an advantage. Ugh. Twelve. So you will take full uh, before calculating anything else, but Ooh. only person not taking full right now before calculating anything else is Thorka. That's going to be 53 necrotic damage. Yay, necrotic. So 25, uh... 26. 26. Ted, not down yet. <laughs> That's good. Hell yeah. And then from there, Tarek, it's your turn. Uh, you are flanking, just so you're aware. 
That is a miss if you're not flanking, but I'm pretty sure you're flanking. Tarek, you're uh, muted, by the way, but uh, you should roll, be rolling for advantage because I believe you're flanking. Okay, I didn't know we were doing the the flank. I still miss anyway. So, well, actually, yeah, it, I have an accuracy would give me one more if I'm already rolling at advantage. And I continue my streak of shit rolling, and I miss... <laughs> So I will uh, bonus action disengage. One, two. Three, Get away from that tail. <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, 40 feet to here. And then with my second action, I will drink another potion of superior healing. I've never seen somebody roll that poorly in three rolls before. I mean, no. this is, this, that, I failed. I had fit in that tidal wave just as a point of reference. I failed every saving throw while in that tidal wave. So. No. I'm continuing Daniel, my just so anyway. You rolled like three ones at, in, in one turn. Anyway, so. Yep. Um. All right. Hey, the only thing I'm doing good at is is sort of rolling. Keeping good yourself alive. Questions. Yeah. So. Um. And then, at the end of your turn, for a legendary action, it is going to uh, do a tail attack on you, Thorka. Yep. 34 against your AC. Yeah. And it's going to do 17 points of bludgeoning damage. Too. And Thork is finally down. Oh, no. Grab it. Now, I'm going to go pee. <laughs> Clink, it is your turn. Gonna fucking pew, even though there's a giant eyeball in my way. 28. Uh, it does hit. Uh, that is 42 points of piercing damage to Mr. Dragonface. And then I'm going to hide behind this tree and have my pet follow me. He's not doing anything. He's just staring at me menacingly. <laughs> yeah, he's just staring at you. He just gets next to you and just stares at you. I have a pet. <laughs> Name him Blinky. His name is Blink. <laughs> and that's that's my turn. At the end of your turn, he's gonna try to attack Hild. Yay! Twenty against your AC. No. All right, Hild, it's your turn. Hoorah! Time to attempt to do the thing. Uh. Okay, uh, so doing the attacking of the thing. Hiya. Yes, <laughs> yes and bad. <laughs> the sword of Zeriel comes crashing down and slams into the dragon. The dragon is now laying unconscious on the ground. Woo! <laughs> now let's see what I do to myself. Uh oh. One second. Let's see what that does. And now you just become just voraciously hungry. <laughs> Almost as if you just... Eat the dragon. Yeah, eat the dragon. You, you just... You want to drink the dragon's blood. You want to eat the dragon's meat. You're just voraciously hungry for the dragon. Ooh. Snacks. <laughs> But I feel like she would just be gnawing on it because her teeth aren't even, like, couldn't even tear into it. It's gonna wake up and be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> uh, it is For still your turn, Hild, if you're doing anything else. I'm gonna, um, try and pull Thorka to the water. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, I'm strong enough to do that. Yeah. <laughs> So you pull Thorka to the water, are you going to give him any drink? Yes. 
Giving uh, you some sip. All right, Zorka, some sip. Zorka, I need you to roll percentile for me. We can be eyeball buddies. I want a pet. <laughs> if I get a pet rat, he's going to be named Gandalf Jr. <laughs> Yay. 46. You and everyone around you within 20 feet heal for 13 hit points. Wow. That includes the dragon. Balls. Nice. Good. Actually, no, like he, if he, if he should, but if I he passes win. up to his deal. Yeah, we won. Well, that would be the end of the duel. Uh-huh. If he but stays I to his word. I chew on him. <laughs> No, you can't chew on him. Please do not chew the dragon. And it's not the dragon's turn yet, he can't do anything, so Zarius, it is your turn if you're doing anything. He, he was with us, I guess, when the dragon did tell him when he got knocked out, that was the end of the fight. Mm -hmm. And now Phil's been knocked out by his children again. All right. So if that's the case, we would go to Thorka. Uh, Thorka stands up, and then he uh, walks over to the dragon and says, "In Draconic, uh, are you still with us?" And then uh, on the dragon's turn, uh, he says, "That was a good fight. That I was a great fight. <laughs> I am done here." Like as soon as as soon as the dragon stands up non-hostile, you just hear in the background as Clink is running away from her eyeball. And it's following you. <laughs> yup! Hey Clink, are you okay? Help me, help me. As you see as she thing, guys, as, sorry. as you see as she has her, her headband over her eyes like a blindfold. But she seems to know where she's going quite fine. Who's your friend? Oh, hello. Clinky! Yes, he's a giant eyeball. He hasn't, he hasn't done anything. He just stares at me menacingly. Aw, it's a friend. Hmm. You may pass. All you have to do to go through the doors behind me is to knock six times. Very simple. From there, you can go through the temple but in order to not fight the statues inside, keep your eyes closed until you reach the very top of the temple. From there, you may grab, from there you may grab the orb and then the statues will not harm you. Uh, can, may we rest here before going in or, do, or is it time sensitive to enter the doors? No, oh, it's not time sensitive at all. You can take your time. So, uh, everyone, would you like to take a rest before we go? And also, it's going to be like 10 o'clock. So, huh? yeah. Yeah, that might be a good idea. We can, like, t literally take a long rest before going in there. And I can talk to the dragon. <laughs> dragon. Dragon. <sighs> The dragon. Tar Tarek's, oh, yeah. at the, Tarek's at the door. <laughs> and he's looking back at everybody. Tarek, we're gonna we're gonna take a nap. Come on. It's fine. <laughs> nap You're time. Safe. It's fine. It's dragon buddy. If the dragon wanted us dead, it would have killed us a long time ago. We won the duel and it's it's over. He just wants to chaotically knock six times on the door and get the fuck out of there. The dragon. You want to rest? The dragon says to you, Thorka. He seems a bit evil. He's he's just tired. He's <laughs> he's tired of getting hit, and he um he's had a rough time with uh dealing with Ubel as we've all has. He's he he wants to. He wants to get rid of him. 
and stop his uh, terror. I recognize that weapon. If he hits me, then I would have likely been dead. I I don't really I don't really I don't want you to die. I feel like you're more used to us alive. There's, you seem nice. And there's probably knowledge that you might you know we might be able to share. Well, I am letting you know that I do not trust him. Tara, come on, let's let's lay down. Come on. The feeling is mutual. <laughs> that that's fine, but we don't. The fight's over. There's no reason to continue the fight. And if everything's in in the temple, I'm pretty sure we can rest here. Oh, pretty you know, pretty well. The dragon has treated us fair so far, so let's do the same. Tarek's not saying anything. He's just standing there holding holding this blade. Just... You can put the blade down. The fight's over. And then he transforms back into his uh, human self. <laughs> See? He's no longer even a dragon. Now he's a regular guy just like us. Derek just dashes just like us. right up behind and just says to the thing, why so afraid of me? <laughs> why don't you show them how evil you are and pluck my life with your blade? Or are you afraid to show them how you are? Come on, we don't have to get to this right now. Let's just be friends. I really hate this singing. Come on, look. You're really bad at it. Let's, let's I stop. I forgot. This. I forgot you have to sing. Everything. You're really bad at it. I'm not a effing bard. I mean, how close to death does this thing did it look before it transformed? I mean, it was bleeding. And then it was healed to 18, so it's at 18 hit points right now. I think you're just scared to die. If your friend kills me, then it will just prove oh, you hear those the dragon's point. <laughs> Are we all afraid to die, Tarek? It, it just got a house. I, I think... I, I personally think things that have been around for a long time are long. really afraid of death. And that's what's led, you know, wh why would why would someone seek to become a lich like Ubel if they were not afraid to, they want power, of course, but you could become powerful and still stay and be, and be mortal. No, they don't want to die. They're afraid of death. And a dragon, he's a dragon. He doesn't want to die. He only knows long life. To die would be is to be afraid of that. But and he would have learned. killed us. He would have killed us without thinking. It and he did not. He he gave us the rules. We we did we did the duel as he told us, and now we're still alive. We won. We've gained entrance into the temple. <sighs> Take a rest, and we can go in. There might be more we can learn from him than did. You know, than uh, the not. I'm not going to teach him anything. I don't trust him, and he doesn't well, seem to care. Well, maybe T Tarek, if you put the sword down and you show and you just talk, you might feel a little bit different. Or you don't have to talk. Just let's just while we're down here. I think we want to play it calm and cool. But it's just so easy just to eliminate this foul thing. 
We don't know how foul he is. It's foul enough if it doesn't know anything about me. All it knows is a device that I use, which is a means to an end. Well, then just keep it at that, then. If he knows the history of that sword, that might be what he's afraid of. We don't know what that sword's done before it was in your hands. Remember, a coward holds a blade, but a warrior wields one. I'm not a warrior, and so I'm no coward. coward. Well, you're also not a coward, either. You're no coward. And, and 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 Thorka says that right into the with the dragon. He's no coward, and he has saved my life countless times. And he is he's sacrificed himself trying to get rid of a greater evil. So if he's if that sword is evil and he's using it to fight against Ubel, then let him. What at this point any what what we need to what we have we're going to use. But that doesn't mean he's that that means he's still trustworthy. So let's just calm down. There might be a lot we can learn from each other. You've been in this cave. Who knows? There might be things that you have interest in that we know about from the outside. Well, that sword controls him. He doesn't control that sword. He's done plenty of things outside of that sword. A lot of times, he just yells at it, and it doesn't work. <laughs> it don't like him either. <laughs> That's because it doesn't listen to him. Well, it maybe the no sword's a jerk. See, the sword is a jerk, not him. <laughs> it takes strength to wield control of that blade. This is, you, you're, he's learning. He uses all types of weapons. Am I still hasted, Ted? Uh, I would say this conversation has likely gone on for five or six minutes, so... Okay. Like, terror. Don't so it's, at by. some point during that, the haste runs off, and I'm, I just, I'm just exhausted. And I'm looking at this thing, and I say, I think you're just afraid. Completely afraid. If it's my time to die from a coward's hands, then it's my time to die. But if that's the case, then it just proves what I've been told by other dragons. So if that's your choice to lose the value of a good fight, to get blood on your blade like a coward, then so be it. Do it. <laughs> so so, th so while Tarek is like trying to like decide whether he's going to eat this man or not, like Thorka's like, oh, hold on, hold on. What, what, what do you mean, other drag? Hold on, Tarek. He, he just let something uh, come out. What do you mean, dragons? What have they told you? What does this sword have to do with other dragons? Well, do you think the other dragons just simply trust humans and other, other beings? They don't of course not. Of course Why would? Not. We talk on a regular basis, you know. I'm not stuck down here. I can leave as I will. This is my lair. I simply protect this area from people like you. But, you know, you have earned your keep, earned your right to step through my lair. But, you know, it is up to you. I am at your mercy. I have given you a fair fight, but if you feel that the uh, you need more blood on your hands, then so be it. Maybe Bizant was right when he used to exclaim that the cowards would wield his blades for him. That sword? How old is that sword? That sword is very old. Older than I. Terror, do you think it's old? It's a means to an end. But do, do, uh, it's fine, but let's. We, you might 
learn more about it. Do you feel it's old? Do you feel it's ancient? What do you what do you feel when you use it? Do, is there some do you think there's someone in it? I'm not saying it's bad or good. I'm just I'm you know, whatever information we can could help you use the sword more. I have I'm, never had any communication with the sword. Do you ever feel like it's holding back like 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 not that it's like maybe it won't talk to you or it's hiding from you there are certain times it 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 does not seem to react to me because it's like myself it, it's chaotic in nature it doesn't want to be controlled so so and then and then uh Thorka looks at the dragon what, what i'm sorry what's the dragon's name again I don't think he ever introduced himself. As no, no, he gave, us, he gave us a name to call him. Crack? Oh, Crack. It was, yeah, it was, yeah, he didn't give you the full name. He said, he said Kark. K-A-R-K, -A -R -K. Yeah. yeah. Kark. So, so, Kark. So, this sword is evil. What, is that, is that what you're trying to say? Now, is that, is that what it's been like in the past? That sword was left in the labyrinth of truth in order to leave it be away from people who would be evil enough to use it. And it seemed to crawl its way out many years later. The soul and the devouring of such still being used to this day, of course. So, if someone who wields this and could wield its power, they'd have to be truly evil. No, but they would start to become corrupt by its power, corrupt by its will, unless they were able to overcome it and tell it what it wanted to, to be strong enough to do that. But he does not wield the blade like that. He has to succumb to its own will, beg it for it to do what it needs to do. But, now that he knows what it is, wouldn't that knowledge now empower him to now know what it really is and take control of this sword and do better with it? If it's a sword and maybe it has evil origins, that doesn't mean now that he knows what it is, he could not now master it and do good with it. In a flash, Tarek raises the sword, the point of it, and puts it under the chin of the of the dragons or the whatever form he is, and holds it there, and just says, "If I wanted to, it would be over right now." So, who's controlling who? Am I controlling the sword, or is the sword controlling me? Well, I think you've answered that question with your threats. There's They're no threat. Evil. There's no threat. There's no evil here. There's just a course of action that can go one way or another. So as far as I'm concerned, right now I'm controlling myself and I'm controlling the sword. And I hold it there and I, I kind of raise it just a bit just to make him lift his head up with the pressures there. And then I lower the sword down and I said, you don't know what you're talking about. I've lived longer than 13 or 14 of your lifetimes, and I know what I am saying. But you can live while the weapon controls you, or do you control the weapon? And then you can truly see what it was supposed to be used for. What was it truly to be used for? The weapon was designed at one point in time to eliminate the souls of angels during the Great War. It was a weapon that was designed to cause chaos and dismay amongst the people. It has much more power than a simple sway that a lowly man brings to the neck of me 
I mean, he's not lonely. He's pretty. He's he's pretty tall. But if you wish to threaten me with your weapon, then you can do with it what you will. You wield it. You do what you want. I've given you the information. You can go on your lowly task. So, Tarek, I got it. I understand being a dick to you. All right? And you got to be really mad. But we just got a lot of information about this weapon that you've had for a long time that we have never have gotten. So, like, what, what, you know, let's now take that information and figure out what else the sword can do. If it can kill angels, it can kill Ob Obel. It and can't. It won't kill Obel. Why? It's powerless against Obel. Because of the undead? Maybe there's some, but he just said there's more to unlock with this sword. There is. Can I do an insight check on everything that this this the dragon was saying about the sword? Yes, but if you feel that your emotions would not be in check, then it would be a disadvantage. All right, I'll do it at disadvantage because, yeah, I'm I'm very close to doing a certain action. So. You believe him, and for once, you feel almost powerless. I think we can believe the sword does more. And I just kind of, I just kind of shrug my shoulders and I look at this thing, and I, I just, I get right up to him. I, I as I she the sword, I just say, "You have no idea who I am," and I, I just, I just walk off. I, I don't say anything. I walk towards the door. And I just plump myself down next to the door and it almost looks like I, I'm tucking myself in to just go to sleep. You said a lot of things about humans and not being trusted. And what you said to that man over there in our world, nine out of ten times would lead into a fight and he just walked away from you knowing that he could gain a lot from your death just he's got weight he's a lot more than you think he is and it's not like he found that sword and it had a, had a note telling him everything about it and he's like oh that sounds great he's been learning it as going on and we've been in countless fights countless countless fights you know if you want to change if you want something to happen that that then dragons not trusting humans humans going after dragons you've given us a lot of help so far and you're letting us pass but we earned that he has to show me that he trusts me before I am going to well, show that I'm going to give him any trust. And it's a start. Giving a, putting a weapon onto my neck and telling me that he is in control of this is not going to be it. That's just how he does things. He wanted to show you that he could have, but he chooses to not strike you, not the sword. That's what he was trying to illustrate to you. Sure, He's, and I could drink all the water that I want and fight you all to my death, but I decided not to. You, you know? could. So there are things that people can and cannot do. So when you're done, if he wishes to speak to me again after you're finished getting your orb, you may do so. 
and then I ask you to leave my lair. That's fair. Well, then I'm gonna go rest for now, and hopefully we can have another conversation. And uh, Thorka uh, goes over to where Tarek is set his little camp up, and then Thorka will set his little camp up. Uh, Clink, after an hour, the eye just disappears. Oh no! Bye, friend! Is she still blind? Or... Nah, I can see. I just see more with my eyes closed. I mean, you probably think she's blind. Oh, that's like five days, that's right. I forgot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Clink has true sight for five days. Cool. So I'm I'm just slouched in in, in the corner with the, with the hat pulled down, but I'm I'm still awake and just sitting there. So, hey, still awake? Want to talk about it? That thing doesn't know me. I agree. That's what I just told him. He's, he's, uh... The he, thing's he... a coward. It hides in the dark. It's a coward. There's no honor. I think... <sighs> I'm I... not an honorable person, but that that thing is... is... Whoa, it's whoa, whoa. Lived, it's lived so long that it believes its own bullshit. Hey, you just said a lot of things that might be or probably true, but don't put yourself down saying you're not honorable. Are you the most honorable? No, not at all. That left you a long time ago, but you've done a lot of honorable things, If even if you don't think you have. So don't cut yourself down, and also don't cut yourself down from past mistakes. All right, we're we're in the now, and you know we're doing it. And think of it this way: we both got a vacation in hell eventually. <laughs> so, I'm not that honorable either. <laughs> we know where we're going. We're just gonna take Ubel with us. I don't know, Thorka. You uh, you have no idea what you've done in the past. You have no idea. I don't care. I don't no. care what you've done in the past. It's what you've done, what I've seen you do, with the time together, and what you're going to do. And what you're going to do is we're going to defeat Ubel together. Okay? You can, If you want to tell me about all the terrible things you've done in the past, sure. But doesn't matter to me because... We've been doing other things together, and we're going to continue doing things together until we chop down Ubel, and then we're done. Remember, I promised you, Ubel was it. We lived through Ubel, we're done. We're going to get that ship. Yeah. And then we can go pirate. It's fine. <laughs> we, can, we can do whatever. We can go legit or not legit. We'll see. We we will definitely will see. But I think sleep on it. I'm not saying you gotta be friends with that thing, but I'm saying there might be more information that he's got in his head about that sword. And that sword might be a bigger key than we've ever thought about. And I know what you said, it's it it might not be anything good against Ubel, but if it can do more got to learn about it or at least get some more clues and find other people that know about it all right so not saying you got to be friends with him but maybe if we when we get back out of this temple 
you can have at least another conversation before we leave. And if it doesn't end with anything good, fine. But we'll just leave. And that will be it. He's not gonna. He's uh, he's not gonna fight us again. I don't. I don't sense he wants another fight. No, because it's scared. Yes, it's definitely. I I a hundred percent agree with you. It's a hundred percent scared, and I that's he fears that sword. That's when there's a lot of history with that sword that could be really useful to to you, to what we're doing. And he seems to know a lot about it. So you don't got to make no choice now. We got to go through We got to take a nap. We're going to have, you know, a little bit of, you know, that glorious, glorious uh, hard bread and <laughs> dried meat and, uh, and stale ale. And then we're going to go into that whatever is inside there with our eyes t- open <laughs> and get an orb and come back out. And we got to see him again on the way out. By then, you might be willing to have another conversation with him. If not, I'm not going to force you to talk to him if you don't want to. Then we just leave. And then we'll, but we do know there's something more to the sword. We ask other people. Yeah, you, you now, now you hear snoring coming from underneath the house. And then Thorka <laughs> continues talking <laughs> for at least 20 more minutes about the boat that, that they're going to get. Oh, I, I muted Phil, so just so you guys know. Okay, so Thor, Thorka knows he's sleeping, but he's good. He just co- keeps going on about the boat that they're he's gonna get. To and it's gonna be great. Think of the rabbits, George. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like the the boys were over there having a heart to heart. The girls were over there sleeping. <laughs> But you don't know if Clink's sleeping or not, unless she's snoring. <laughs> Once I hear the metal vibrating, I assume she's snoring. <laughs> <laughs> unless it's the peanut brain rattling around. It's no, her one. Just... It's her one brain cell. Yep, just rattling around when she sleeps. That's Gandalf. That that is Gandalf. But I would assume their brains are the same size. <laughs> Just hers a... magically works better. That's true. Okay. So I take it we're short resting? Um, yeah, you could do a short rest here. Oh, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure if we were going to do a short rest or a long rest. Yeah, I don't know be, what... It would have to be short. That's fine. I figured we just, they were just taking a short nap. Wait, did I? I'm just doing some hit dice. Yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing before we uh, stop for the night. Right. Otherwise, I think this is actually right. a good place to stop, unless you wanted to uh, start going through uh, the temple. No, it, no it's it's late for me. it's yeah, it's ten thirty. Do like... the temple, do the temple. <laughs> well, we'll call it. For no, tonight. I'm good. It's not yeah, a problem I'm good. At all. So I hope you guys had a lot of fun. Um, we'll be chatting at a game. Uh, thank you for anybody who is watching. We will make sure to upload this onto YouTube. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. So long.